Hi, my name is Amashni. So far, we have found the area formulae for several shapes. The rectangle, the parallelogram, the triangle, the trapezium, and the kite. In this lesson, we have a careful look at a shape that is very different from the others, the circle. Zandi and Tobeka have joined us again for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine the area formula of a circle. We say that the distance around a polygon is called a perimeter and the distance around a circle is called a circumference. I want you to look at something that you all know well, a bicycle. Look at the wheels carefully. Identify the diameter and the circumference. Do you see that the circumference is longer than the diameter? But, but how much longer? Let's ask Zandi and Tebeka what they think. I guess the circumference is about twice the size of its diameter. You think so? Nah, I think it's at least three times. Let's measure to see if Zandi and Tebeka are right. <laughs> Were you surprised? Tobacco certainly was. Going around the wheel is three times longer than going straight through it. Let's take some circular objects and measure their circumferences and diameters. I've asked Zandi and Tobacco to measure a bucket, a can and a five rand coin and place these values into a table. <laughs> Zandi measured the circumference of each object with a measuring tape. Tobeka put this information into a table. Then Zandi used the same measuring tape to measure the diameter of the objects and then read off the lengths. Here's a table with all the information they found. <laughs> We still need to complete this column of the table. It shows the relationship between the circumference and the diameter, written as a ratio. We can use a calculator to work out these ratios. The can has a circumference of 32,7 and a diameter of 10,4 centimeters. We can write this ratio as 32,7 to 10,4. We can divide C by D and we get an answer of 3,14. Now in the bucket, the circumference was 82,3 centimeters and it had a diameter of 26,2. The ratio can be written as 82,3 to 26,2. And C divided by D gives us 3,14 rounded off. For the 5 rand coin, we get a circumference of 9,1 cm and a diameter of 2,9 cm. The ratio can be written as 9,1 to 2,9. And we divide C by D and again we get 3,14 rounded off. This is interesting. It seems as if the value of the ratios of circumference to diameter is always a number that is very close to 3. And it seems that it is always the same, no matter how big or small the object is. We give this ratio a special name, pi. We use this math symbol to show pi. The number pi is an irrational number. In the decimal form, it never ends, and the pattern of digits does not repeat itself. The rounded off value that we use in mathematics for pi is 3,14. We can also write pi as a fraction, 22 divided by 7. 
So we are ready to write the relationship between the circumference of the circle and the diameter of the circle in this way. The circumference divided by the diameter is equal to pi. The diameter is equal to 2 radius. So this means that C divided by 2R is equal to pi. To get a formula for the circumference, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 2R. This gives us C is equal to pi times 2R. And we can write this as C is equal to 2 pi R. Fantastic! Now we have the formula for the circumference of any circle. We're going to do another activity. I've asked Zandi and Tebeka to help us again. I gave her cutouts of three identical circles. I asked Zandi to take the first circle and cut it up into four equal pieces and rearrange the pieces to make this picture. Then I asked her to cut the other circle into eight identical pieces and rearrange it to make this picture. Then Zandi took the third circle and cut it into 16 identical pieces. She rearranged the pieces to get this picture. Have you noticed any patterns starting to appear with all these diagrams? What do you think the picture would look like if we have 32 identical segments rearranged like the previous one? The more pieces we cut from the circle, the closer our pattern gets to the shape of a rectangle. That means if we could cut up the circle into many, many small pieces, we would eventually be able to make a rectangle. Let's see if we can use this knowledge about the area of a rectangle to work out the area of a circle. Look carefully at how the circle segments fit together to make a rectangle. Do you see that the base of the rectangle is made up of these little bits here? The other side of the rectangle is also made up of the segments of the circle. Do you see that these two parts added together make up the circumference of the entire circle? This means that the length on the top as well as the bottom are equal. So we can say that each of these sides is equivalent to half the length of the circumference. Now, we've got the base of the rectangle. What about the height? Do you see that the height of the rectangle is actually the radius. We have the base and the height. Let's work out the area of the circle. We know that the area of the rectangle is given by the formula A is equal to base times height. Now we know that the base is equal to half of the circumference. And we know that the height here is represented by the radius r. Now we found previously that c was equal to 2 pi r. So we can substitute for c and we get half times 2 pi r multiplied by r, the height. This simplifies to pi r times r which gives me r squared. Fantastic! Now we know the formula for the surface area of the circle as well. Here's a task for you to try. Have a look around your home and classroom. Find three circular objects. Measure the diameter and the circumference of each to find C divided by D. Then calculate the area of each. Wow! Can you see how useful the rectangle has been to us? 
We used it to find the area of several shapes, including the circle. I hope you will join us in the next lesson, where we will discover more about the surface area of prisms. Till next time, goodbye.